Section twenty of the American Book of the Dog. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Read by Michelle Fry, Baton Rouge, Louisiana. The American Book of the Dog, G. O. Shields, Editor. Section twenty. The Cocker Spaniel by J. Otis Fellows the spaniel is one of the oldest breeds of dogs in existence and several other and later breeds owe some of their best qualities to crosses on this breed so far as known the spaniel is as the name indicates a native of spain from there he was introduced into england and by crossing interbreeding and manipulation several strains have been thrown off from the original parent stock dr john caius writing in fifteen seventy six says quote, there be gentle dogs serving the hawk the first of the spaniel called in latin hispaniolis there are two sorts viz the first findeth game on the land the other findeth game on the water such as delight on the land play their parts either by swiftness of foot or by often questing to search out and to spring the bird for further hope of advantage or else by some secret sign and privy token bewray the place where they fall the first kind of such serve the hawk the second the net or train the first kind have no peculiar names assigned unto them save only that they be denominated after the bird which by natural appointment he is allotted to take for the which consideration the cocker is thus named as spoken of hereafter such be called dogs for the falcon the pheasant the partridge and such like the common sort of people call them by one general word namely spaniels as though this kind of dog came originally and first of all out of spain the most part of their skins is white and if they be marked with any spots they are commonly red and somewhat great therewithal the hairs not growing in such thickness but that the mixture of them may easily be perceived we are to choose him by his shape beauty metal and cunning hunting his shape being discerned in the good composition of his body as when he hath a round thick head a short nose a long well compact and hairy ear broad-eyed lips a clear red eye a thick neck a broad chest short and well-knit joints round feet strong claws good round ribs a gaunt belly a short broad back a thick bushy and long-haired tail and all his body generally long and well-haired he is small with a wanton playing tail and a busy labouring nose and to give his master warning of what he senteth he doth it by whimpering and whinnies making him adapted for covert shooting they vary in size from fourteen to twenty pounds in weight the doctor then describes other varieties of the spaniel family as follows that kind of a dog whose service is required in following upon the water partly through a natural towardness and partly by diligent teaching is endued with that property this sort is somewhat big and of a measurable greatness having long rough and curly hair not obtained by extraordinary trades but given by nature's appointment yet nevertheless friend gessner i have described and set him out in this manner pulled and nodded from the shoulders to the hindmost legs and to the end of his tail which i did for use and customs cause that being as it were made somewhat bare and naked by the shearing of such superfluity of hair they might achieve more lightness and swiftness and be less hindered in swimming so troublesome and needless a burden being shaken off this kind of dog is properly called aqueticus a water spaniel because he frequenteth and hath recourse to the water where all his game and exercise lieth whereupon he is likewise named a dog for the duck because in that quality he is excellent 
we use them also to bring us our bolts and arrows out of the water missing our mark whereat we directed our level which otherwise we should hardly recover and oftentimes they restore to us our shafts which we thought never to see touch or handle again after they were lost for which circumstances they are called inquisitors searchers and finders further on the good doctor alludes to the delicate neat and pretty kind of dogs called spaniel gentle or the comforter in latin melitocus or totes of which he writes there is besides those which we have already delivered another sort of gentle dogs in this our english soil but exempted from the order of the residue notwithstanding many make much of those pretty puppies called spaniels gentle and though some suppose that such dogs are fit for no service i dare say by their leaves they be in a wrong box thus it will be seen that the cocker is one of the oldest and bluest blooded strains of the spaniel family he was the friend and companion of nobility in an age when few other dogs were thus honoured stonehenge in his book dogs of the british isles says quote, the cocker can scarcely be described inasmuch as there are so many varieties in different parts of great britain he may however be said in general terms to be a light active spaniel of about fourteen pounds weight on the average sometimes reaching twenty pounds with very elegant shape a lively and spirited carriage in hunting he keeps his tail down like the rest of his kind works it constantly in a most rapid and merry way alone he may be known from the springer who also works his but solemnly and deliberately without the same pleasurable sensations which are displayed by the cocker the head is round and the forehead raised muzzle more pointed than the springer and the ears less heavy but of good length and well clothed with soft wavy hair which should not be matted in a heavy mass the eye is of medium size slightly inclined to water but not to weep like the toy dogs body of medium length and the shape generally resembling that of a small setter these dogs are well feathered and the work for their feet and legs requires them to be strong and well formed the coat should be thick and wavy but not absolutely curled which last shows the cross with the water spaniel and that gives too much obstinacy with it to conduce to success in covert shooting the color varies from plain liver or black to black and tan white and black white and liver white and red or white and lemon different breeds are noted as possessing some one of these in particular but i am not aware that any one is remarkable as belonging to a superior race End quote. an old work on the dog condensed from stonehenge's british rural sports and the farmer's calendar contains the following description of spaniels quote, field spaniels are divided into two principal groups the springers or large variety used for all sorts of covert game the cockers kept more especially for woodcocks to follow which they must be of a smaller size the springer is again subdivided into the clumber sussex norfolk and other strains while the cocker includes the devonshire and welsh varieties as well as many other strains without special names the cocker spaniel is a much smaller dog than the springer seldom exceeding eighteen pounds in weight for bitches and twenty-five pounds for dogs he is much more active than the springer and of any color more or less marked with white and closely resemble each other in other respects they are nearly mute but whimper slightly on a scent and when well broken they distinguish each kind of game by the note they give out especially the woodcock of which they are very fond mr a w langdale a prominent english authority quoted by vero shaw in his work on the dog says of the cocker quote, smaller than their brethren the springers they work in a totally different style and in a hedgerow or copse with a thick underwood are invaluable they like the springers are not noisy but when they do give tongue it is of such a silvery note as to warm the ardent sportsman's blood 
Clockers run into all sorts of color, from lemon and white, orange and white, and orange, most generally seen in Wales, to the liver and white, liver and tan, and roan, generally seen south, and the black and tan of the north, end quote in undertaking to write an article on the cocker spaniel i may say that i am no novice in this field i have bred them for thirty-five years spaniels that i bred won prizes at the first bench shows in america and since eighteen eighty one we have won over twelve hundred prizes it was i that first advocated a club to improve the spaniels of america i was selected by the breeders of america as one of the committee to frame a standard for the cocker spaniel club which is the oldest specialty club in america the club organized in eighteen eighty one is still alive with a large number of members and is now called the american spaniel club before eighteen eighty one anything and everything that looked like a spaniel was called a cocker they were generally liver or liver and white in color long-legged snippy-headed dogs without any fixed type all that was required of them was to hunt and they certainly could do that the cocker soon improved under the american spaniel club standard but they were not content with a long low dog but must have the longest and lowest the standard was made by practical men of wide experience with cockers in the field and of course they made a standard for a dog fit for work but a lot of dude judges who never fired a gun or saw a cocker at work step into the ring and spoil the whole thing by giving prizes to dogs that are cripples practically unfit for field work the worse the dog is deformed the more prizes he can win i know i am right in the stand that i have taken against the longest and lowest abortion and others know it prominent breeders professional breakers practical sportsmen editors of sportsmen's journals and many others who love a cocker often write me to endorse the position i have taken but what good i can do is all spoilt by the non-sporting dude judges for the general purpose dog there is nothing that can compare with the cocker spaniel he can take the place of the pointer setter hound or retriever is not too large for the house makes a good watch dog and can be taught as many tricks as a poodle but to secure a concentration of power and endurance he must have a short back with immense loin for the weight of the dog his legs must not be too short but straight and well boned and the feet must be firm and cat-like not splay-footed loose and flabby as we too often see them nowadays until eighteen eighty seven we imported or owned about all the good field and cocker spaniels that crossed the pond bob the third benedict beatrice dash hindu creole bub jenny dandy dinah miss oboe the second newton abbott lady oboe junior young oboe burdett bob bonanza bobo etc the jacobs strain was useless for field work the pharaoh or oboe strain not much better as they had never done any work in england the burdett or bolton beverly were the best of all crossed with native stock they are hard to beat in the field in the early days of dog shows mr f burdett the first secretary of the birmingham dog show had a breed of cockers collected near ladderworth england where they had been bred for many years by an old family named footman they were unrivalled in appearance as well as at work taking every prize for which they competed they were black and tan in color after mr burdett's death most of them were sold to mr w w bolton beverly york england and en passant i wish to say that mr bolton is the oldest cocker spaniel breeder in the world as well as the greatest authority mr o s hubble while visiting in england in eighteen seventy three purchased a pair of mr bolton for which he paid nine hundred dollars they were a bow and blanche black with rich tan markings blanche whelped october eighteen seventy four eight puppies one of the litter bell was presented to mr a c waddell she died in my kennel in eighteen eighty six but i had several litters from her by champion hornell dandy 
bullock's spaniels as exhibited originally were very beautiful but by no means typical for the very good reason that they were crossed with the irish water spaniel to get the immense feather and ear so much admired in the early days of dog shows in england but which so deeply impregnated the strain with the fatal top-knot and rough coat that it has never been altogether eradicated this strain was also crossed with the sussex an own brother to the famous flirt and nelly blacks was the pale liver-coloured george who mated with his sister nelly produced one of the very best-looking sussex spaniels ever exhibited this will surely account for the eccentricities of colour cropping up now and again in the progeny the tendency being to reproduce the original colour of their ancestors the colour or odd colour is often intensified by the oboe cross as no one can say how this strain was produced and when papers and letters were sent to mr farrow about the red and buff puppies got by silk and oboe the second he was silent as an oyster i do not object to the reds and buffs myself for hornell velda a buff was the best cocker ever seen in america and brantford red jacket a red and hornell dick a buff although of different type are as good as any we have many of the oldest strains of cockers were lemon red and roan or these colors were more or less intermingled with white in 1861 i bought a buff cocker from a sailor at port colburn she had been stolen in england was buff colored and the exact image of velda the real old-fashioned cocker is not often seen nowadays the present generation of fanciers never saw them and surely never used them afield they simply don't know what they were or what they ought to be as to the absurdly long body and low formation which i hold to be not only a deformity but altogether contrary to the true formation and type it must also be against the very utility of the breed mr j e hosford of washington d c in an article in the american field speaking of the good qualities of the cocker says there is something about this breed of dogs that at once appeals to our sympathy and no man can own one and not feel constantly on the alert to defend it from abuse slander or misrepresentation there is no other breed of dogs that will win one's affection so completely and hold it so firmly a new spaniel puppy may never replace in its owner's heart some favorite old setter or pointer but it will be sure to find a place there and hold it too against all comers when the shooting season closes the pointer and setter are laid up in ordinary until the approach of the next season if owned by the right man they are regularly exercised and carefully groomed every day and their grateful master never tires of relating their wonderful prowess in the field they rest on their laurels contentedly not so with the little cocker he and his game have no closed season he seems to know intuitively a thousand and one little tricks and ways to please entertain and surprise his master in and out of season he is constantly at work in a busy merry unobtrusive way he knows your words better than you do yourself and governs himself accordingly if you want him he is right here before you wagging his tail and looking at you intently as if to say i'm ready for anything if you don't want him he is away in some corner quietly dozing or apparently sleeping but always on the alert he is never troublesome he is always able to take care of himself and to do a great deal else besides he is a most noble and faithful guardian of your property and person while he is in your possession chickens do not scratch the flower beds and wallow around the front porch rats do not come into the cellar nor strange cats into the back yard your peaches and melons ripen before they are stolen and burglars do not tamper with your locks and window catches if anything goes wrong about the place the little cocker is almost always the first one to notice it and the almost human way in which he comes and tells you of it touches certain chords in the heart which do not vibrate too often they are the handiest little companions of the whole dog race they ask for but little room little food and little care yet in return they give a value tangible only to those who know how to love and appreciate a good and faithful dog their worth cannot be told in dollars and cents nor compared with other standards 
i know of no other breed of dogs so generally useful and worthy of man's companionship at all times and places in town or country although i have not had personal experience on all game yet from close study of their ways and methods and a knowledge of their great intelligence i am sure they would not be out of place whether one hunts ducks or squirrels coons or rabbits partridges pheasants woodcocks or wild turkeys and i was not at all surprised to read in a recent number of the american field that one of our best-known sportsmen have found them very serviceable while hunting deer i know the cocker and i am not afraid to say that he can make himself more or less useful on any game that is hunted and unless a sportsman confines himself to some game to which another breed of dogs is better adapted there is no more useful dog for him to own than a bright active intelligent cocker spaniel now let me ask why are they not more popular why are not thousands instead of hundreds sold every year when they can be utilized at all times and kept in city or country in the house or outdoors at an office or a hotel why are they counted by ones and twos to a county here and there while every town has almost as many setters pointers and hounds as there are men and boys who shoot it is simply because the merits and good qualities of the cocker are not known to the masses it is because our favorites have not been advertised and pushed to the front as the other breeds of sporting dogs have and if cocker breeders and cocker owners would institute field trials for cockers thousands of sportsmen would come and see them run who are now ignorant of their usefulness then we should see the noble little dog take his place at the front where he belongs End quote and not only as a field dog does the cocker excel but as a pet a house dog a companion for children or adults he is without a rival when desired for this purpose alone he may be bred down to twenty pounds or under no dog is more affectionate than the cocker and none has so many ways of showing his affection none is more faithful as a guardian of persons or property and none more quiet unobtrusive or cleanly in his habits in training for the house or field be gentle but firm and patient as soon as the dog knows what you want he will do it himself never under any circumstances use a whip or speak harshly to a cocker you can coax him to do anything but he will not stand the whip it is only a matter of patience to teach a cocker to do anything that a dog can do they can almost talk i now own two that can sing and they will accompany any instrument that is played the small dogs seem to learn tricks quicker than the large ones, and a cocker never forgets. My son taught a little cocker forty-two distinct tricks in a year. This little dog was better and quicker than any two messenger boys in the country, was also a master hand on woodcock and roughed grouse. A friend of mine has a handsome black and tan cocker, Neptune by name, who considers himself the chosen friend, the guardian, the nurse, the messenger of the family when his master comes into the house after an absence of a few hours the little dog is beside himself with joy he leaps dances and rubs against the man and in various ways shows his delight when his master sits down the little dog will if invited leap upon his lap rub and caress him in a perfect ecstasy of joy and then without waiting for a command he will leap down run and get the man's slippers and bring them to him as much as to say here my friend put these on and be comfortable if the master lies down on the sofa the dog lies beside him either on the sofa or on the floor as directed and any one who approaches him while asleep is warned by an angry growl and a show of ivory that the atmosphere about there is unhealthy for intruders if the master move uneasily or moan in his sleep nep is up in an instant peering anxiously into his face whining and showing the most intense anxiety for his charge this same delight is shown when any member of the family returns from even a temporary absence and the same solicitude and care are bestowed upon any member of the family who lies down during the day at night nep seems to think it is his duty to guard the room of his young mistress he sleeps just outside her door and any one who attempts to approach it gets into trouble at once 
there are no small children in this family but when friends call and bring children the little dog is delighted beyond measure he at once takes charge of the little folks and not even their own mother is allowed to punish them in his presence after caressing and romping with them a few minutes he sails away gets his ball brings it and in all but words invites his playmates to a friendly game they throw the ball through the halls he retrieves it lays it at their feet and looking up at them beseeches them with his great dark eyes and eager excited motions to throw it again he plays hide-and-seek with them as enthusiastically and as skilfully as any one of their own number some member of the party holds him and blinds him by placing his long silky ears over his eyes when the signal is given and he is released he races through the house with the speed of a greyhound for a few moments in a kind of general search then he cools down and goes about his work more systematically he approaches looks at and smells of each child in the room even if there be a dozen of them apparently in order to learn which one is missing then he starts on a tour of the rooms and halls searching for both foot and body scent and soon locates the fugitive no matter where he or she may be the little children frequently step into a closet and close the door but nep finds them all the same and having smelt at the threshold until sure he is right sets up an emphatic barking that soon brings the hidden treasure laughing and screaming into the light once when playing this game with him a little girl hid on top of the piano nep hunted her through all the rooms and finally decided that she was in the parlor he ran sniffing and yelping eagerly from side to side of this room looking in and behind every chair finally he took up her trail and followed it he found the chair from which she had stepped onto the piano leaping into this he stood up with his feet on the back of it and this enabled him to see the little miss perched on the centre of the lid his barking though most excited and vigorous was well nigh drowned in the shouts and screams of laughter in which all the spectators old and young joined nep carries notes and packages up and down stairs and anywhere about the house thus saving his master and mistress many a step these charges he always delivers to the person to whom he is sent and it is useless for any one else to try to get them from him in rapt when the postman rings the bell nep goes down gets the mail and delivers it safely to his mistress what is he worth what do you imagine it would take to buy such a friend if you owned him he is worth his weight in gold but that wouldn't buy him his owner would as soon sell one of his own children as nep and yet any well-bred cocker may be taught these things if only a reasonable amount of time effort patience and horse sense be devoted to the task in breeding i do not try to have one dog correct faults in the other but try to have both as perfect as i can get them i do not object to in and in breeding as it fixes the type and i have never yet seen any bad results from it such as deformities or loss of capacity to learn after the bitch has been bred i give her exercise until she is ready to whelp i always give her a quiet place to whelp in with plenty of room the bitch always seems to do better alone but care must be taken in cold weather that the puppy shall not get chilled cocker spaniels are always docked i do it when the puppies are from one to two weeks old before they can move around much then the wound heals quicker the operation is painless let one person hold the puppy's tail on a block of wood while another with a sharp chisel and a mallet removes just half of the tail all well-bred cockers are natural hunters and retrievers and their senses of sight and smell are more acute than those of either the setter or pointer captain mcmurdo told me that when breaking setters and pointers he always had his little cocker bitch at heel and he could tell by her actions when near game although the setters and pointers ranging ahead would give no notice of it when a cocker is under control he is trained he should be taught to stop instantly and to come in promptly he will always work his ground thoroughly but must not range out of gunshot because he flushes his game and if this be done too far from the gun you lose your chance for a shot i do not train my dogs to drop to shot or wing but always to stop and at the word i think this is important 
for while you have the dog under better control at a close charge in such a position he does not have a chance to use his eyes i have often seen them stand on their hind feet and jump up to see where the bird has gone our best woodcock shooting here is in tall corn woodcock dogs i do not train to drop to shot a wing but let them go for all they are worth then the bird will top the corn and you can get a fair shot a writer in land and water gives some excellent advice regarding the training of spaniels and i cannot do better than to quote a few paragraphs in his own words he says most people are contented if a dog will work within gunshot and push out the game for him to kill almost any mongrel with the necessary practice and experience will do this but i assume that the sportsman takes a pride in his dogs likes to have good-looking and well-bred ones and if he wishes to shoot in comfort and in good form when he uses spaniels it is quite as necessary to have them well trained as any other breed of sporting dog i will therefore give such directions as experience has taught me are useful i know no dog that more repays the trouble of breaking yourself that is if you have the requisite knowledge and patience than the spaniel who from the natural love and affection he has for his master more than any other dog should be more ready to work for him than any one else the spaniel's natural love of and ardor in hunting require a firm hand over him until he is matured there is an old saying that a spaniel is no good until he is nearly worn out there is a great deal of truth in this and the spaniel's enthusiasm must be largely reduced before he can get down to cool earnest work i recollect an old bitch that belonged to a devonshire sportsman that was so cunning that she used to catch as much game as he shot when the old man died i bought the bitch as she had a great reputation but she was far too much of a pot hunter for me i could have backed her against a moderate gun any day spaniels get very knowing and working to the gun after a few months and it is astonishing what efforts they will make to maneuver the game out to the shooter i have seen numberless instances of this particularly in hedgerow shooting when i have frequently seen a clever old dog on winding game not make a rush at it which would have had the effect of sending it out on the other side but pop through the fence and push it out to you this as i have said is only acquired by experience and a young vigorous spaniel will sometimes push up the game irrespective of lending any aid to the gun a really good spaniel even when he is busy questing and bustling about should always have an eye to the gun and to work to it instead of for himself and his own gratification and amusement you cannot well begin too early to train young spaniels to get their noses down and to hunt close to work thoroughly every bit of ground and every hole and corner that can possibly shelter a head of game this is what the spaniel is required to do when he is grown up and in order to inculcate this habit in him and to discourage him in what he is so prone to do namely go ahead you should begin by flinging small bits of meat or boiled liver into small patches of turnips in the garden or small patches of thick bushes or any kind of covert that will cause him to seek for it with his nose and not with his eyes by no means enter your young spaniels to rabbits if you can avoid it they take to them naturally when they get the chance and there is no fear of their not having the opportunity soon enough enter them to winged game by all means and for this purpose get an old cock partridge cut one wing and put him in a small patch of thick covert never take young spaniels into large or thick coverts where they can get away from under your eye confine your working ground to small bits of covert patches of turnips bushes bits of gorse anything in fact where you will be likely to have thorough control over them and where they are in reach of an attendant whom you should always have with you to turn them to your whistle i have found it a first-rate plan to take them out on the sides of rivers and ponds where there are lots of moorhens and plenty of sedges and rushes let them hunt in the rushes till they are tired and a morning's work of this kind will do them more good than anything i know of they soon become fond of the work it teaches them to hunt close and they are perfectly under the control of yourself and assistant teach them early to drop to hand and shot and spare no pains about it 
this is a part of the spaniel's education which is generally neglected i know many men who instead of making them drop to shot make them come to heel using the words come around or heel it answers every purpose and as it brings every dog to you and he has to work right away from you again when he gets the signal it has its advantages in keeping them under control but on the whole i prefer the dropping to shot and wing instantly it is difficult to make a spaniel drop to fur and if you can keep him from chasing merely putting up hares and rabbits but not following them after they are started rest satisfied that little more is necessary or desirable i once saw an interesting thing of this kind i was shooting with a gentleman near southampton in one of his coverts to a team of small clumbers we were both standing in a ride and saw a charming little bitch feathering near us toward the ride just as she got to it out popped a rabbit and scuttled down the ride followed out of the covert by the bitch but as soon as she cleared the wood and was in the ride close on to the rabbit which she had not seen till then down she dropped entirely of her own accord she had not seen either of us neither did we know that we were each observing this pretty bit of work until we compared notes a few minutes after and agreed that we had never seen anything better it is rather difficult to describe but to me it was worth all the afternoon's shooting and it made an impression at the time which is as fresh as ever now she was i need scarcely say thoroughly broken if it is desired to make young spaniels take water and they show any disinclination to it the best plan is to take them to a stream which you can wade through walk through to the other side and they will probably follow you at once if they do not walk straight away from the opposite side and go out of sight they will come after making a little fuss about it if you have not a suitable shallow stream but are obliged to make use of a deep river for your purpose get an attendant whom they do not know to hold your puppies while you go round by a bridge out of their sight and come down opposite to them and follow the instructions i have given above remember many young dogs have at first a great fear of getting out of their depth all at once but will freely dabble into a shallow stream so that it is best to lead them on by degrees once having got off their legs and finding that it is an easy matter to swim there will be no further trouble always choose warm weather for this teaching there is however no better plan of teaching them to take to the water than letting them hunt more hens as to whether spaniels should be taught to retrieve or not will depend on what your requirements are the number you use and so on if you own but one dog by all means take all the trouble you can to perfect him in this business and for this purpose you should choose your whelp from a strain that retrieves naturally if you work three or four spaniels together unless they are thoroughly broken they all want to retrieve and it is often the cause of much trouble nothing looks worse than to see several dogs all tugging at one bird except perhaps the bird itself afterward if your dogs are sufficiently broken and under command and will drop to shot or come to heel and you can direct either one of them to find the wounded game while the others remain down or at heel you can let them take it in turn which shall be allowed the pleasure and honor of recovering the wounded but how rarely one sees spaniels so well under command as this in the case of a team of spaniels i think it better that they should not be allowed to retrieve and this duty is better confined to a regular retriever it is a good plan with young spaniels to walk round a covert toward evening when pheasants are out at feed in the stubbles having an attendant with you to prevent them getting into covert and walk in a zigzag way about the stubbles you can generally give them plenty of practice in this way and enter them well to the scent of winged game if your puppies do not readily return to your whistle but show a disposition to go on turn your back upon them and go the other way which will generally have the desired effect and a rate or a crack of the whip from your attendant will greatly aid it if a puppy is too fast put up a foreleg in his collar or tie a strap tightly round one hind leg just above the hock but neither of these must remain long without changing or you will produce swelling and inflammation apart from the pleasure and satisfaction there is in shooting to dogs of your own breaking there is this advantage 
that they learn to understand your ways and to know thoroughly your every look and motion while you at the same time perfectly understand them in selecting young spaniels to break if you do not breed your own be most particular in getting them from a good working strain of a sort that a friend of mine designates as savage for work to work spaniels in thick large woods you should go always with them to work them or send someone they are accustomed to work with or they will become wild or slack End quote a writer in the american field also gives the following good points on this subject i have had an extensive experience in training cockers and have always found them exceedingly tractable and anxious to learn i use the same methods for yard breaking that are commonly used for setters the cocker is a natural retriever and readily fetches to hand my old dog jip i trained with great care and had him completely under my control he would charge at word or sign as far as he could hear or see me and would obey the motion of my hand in sending him in any direction he was obedient to whistle so that when in motion one whistle would stop him and when stopped one whistle would start him in whatever direction i motioned one long whistle would call him to my feet he would follow to heel anywhere when a year old i took him out for woodcock the first time he was ever in cover i had not been on woodcock ground ten minutes before he gave voice i knew that meant birds and immediately gave one short sharp whistle which brought the dog to a stop taking a good position i gave one more whistle when he started quickly giving voice and flushed a woodcock which my friend shot calling to jip to fetch he obeyed instantly bringing the bird in tenderly we hunted about four hours raised nine woodcocks and shot seven jip found them all and retrieved every dead bird never failing to obey me and never flushed a bird until ordered to go on always giving me warning of the presence of a bird by giving voice i have been unfortunate in not living in a partridge country since i was a boy and for that reason have never trained a cocker for partridge hunting still i believe i can take any one of my cockers and hunt partridges as i have woodcocks but my friends who use cockers for partridge hunting usually allow the dog to tree the birds all the experience i have had with cockers on partridges was when a boy and without any trouble i had my little spaniel trained so he would circle about a bird giving voice as he ran gradually drawing the circle smaller until he flushed the bird which would seek refuge in the nearest tree End quote. for fuller and more complete instructions on this subject i would commend to my readers a little book called the spaniel and its training by d bolton herald it is an excellent work and is invaluable to owners of spaniels i would advise anyone about to purchase a cocker to get a puppy and train it for his own use the best worker i ever owned was trained on the street going to and from my shop buy a dog that will mature at about twenty six or twenty eight pounds a cobby dog that stands about fourteen inches at the shoulder with head of medium length good straight legs and hard round feet avoid the long-headed long-bodied and short crooked-legged dog as you would a serpent for it is a physical impossibility for them to do good work also avoid a dog with a light-coloured eye for my part i always prefer a bitch as they learn easier are more faithful and never want to roam in quest of sexual pleasures following is the american spaniel club's standard for cocker spaniels general appearance value ten head fifteen eyes five ears ten neck and shoulders ten body fifteen length five legs and feet fifteen coat ten tail five total one hundred a cocker spaniel must not weigh more than twenty eight pounds nor less than eighteen pounds general appearance symmetry etc value ten a cocker spaniel should be eminently a well-built graceful and active dog and should show strength without heaviness or clumsiness any of the spaniel colors is allowable but beauty of color and marking must be taken into consideration 
head value fifteen should be of fair length muzzle cut off square tapering gradually from the eye but not snippy skull rising in a graceful curve from the stop and with the same outline at the occiput the curve line being flatter but still curving at the middle of the skull the head should be narrowest at the eyes and broadest at the set-on of ears and viewed from the front the outline between the ears should be a nearly perfect segment of a circle the stop is marked and the groove runs up the skull gradually becoming less apparent till lost about halfway to the occiput this prevents the domed king charles skull and there should not be the heaviness of the large field spaniels but a light graceful well-balanced head jaws level neither undershot nor pig-jawed teeth strong and regular eyes value five round and moderately full they should correspond in color with the coat ears value ten lobular set on low leather fine and not extending beyond the nose well clothed with long silky hair which must be straight or wavy no positive curls or ringlets neck and shoulders value ten neck should be sufficiently long to allow the nose to reach the ground easily muscular and running into well-shaped sloping shoulders body value fifteen ribs should be well sprung chest of fair width and depth body well ribbed back short in the coupling flank free from any tucked up appearance loin strong length value five from tip of nose to root of tail should be about twice the height at shoulder rather more than less legs and feet value fifteen the four legs should be short strong in bone and muscle straight neither bent in nor out at elbow pasterns straight short and strong elbows well let down the hind legs should be strong with well bent stifles hocks straight looked at from behind and near the ground feet should be of good size round turning neither in nor out toes not too spreading the soles should be furnished with hard horny pads and there should be plenty of hair between the toes coat value ten should be abundant soft and silky straight or wavy but without curl chest legs and tail well feathered there should be no top knot or curly hair on top of the head tail value five usually docked carried nearly level with the back at work it is carried lower with a quick nervous action which is characteristic of the breed this ends section twenty the cocker spaniel